what's up Sagittarius this is soul and Sagittarius we're going to take a look at some energies for you this upcoming week starting June 29th and ending July uh, 5th 2020 the messages will be for uh, Sagittarius Sun Moon and Sagittarius rising signs all right Sagittarius um, yeah once again uh, happy 4th of July celebration for those who celebrate 4th of July uh, I've been saying in the videos, other videos, our 4th of July in my area has been totally shut down and canceled. So, with that being said, uh, Sagittarius, sit back, relax, and I hope that you enjoy your reading. All right, Sagittarius, let's see what's uh, potentially coming up for you guys uh, this upcoming week. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and Sagittarius rising signs. Sagittarius, I'm using the true black tarot um, that I haven't used in quite a while. Uh, I pulled it out because someone had thrown in the comment, uh, when was I going to use this deck again? They apparently ordered this deck and uh, received it and uh, fell in love with it just like I did. Um, so yeah, I'm using it now, but the only, I think the only reason why I um, maybe put it aside, the images on here are extraordinary. The, the creator, I can't think of his name right now, and I do apologize for that has done a very wonderful job and this deck apparently sells out constantly there's always some sort of back order uh, going on with this deck i should have ordered two of them but uh with that being said the difficulty that i have is in shuffling and most people um that i've encountered um had the same problem it's because he's done a, too much of a <laughs> well you can't really do too much he's done an extraordinary job with the deck in itself the backs are velvety smooth and it makes it difficult to shuffle the cards uh, because they uh, have a tendency to, you know, kind of like mini stick and then that's when they flip over. Uh, so, but anyway, we're going to use this deck here. All the cards are in the upright position, Sagittarius. And with that being said, let's get started and see what we're going to uh, start off with. <laughs> Your shadow card energy, we're going to start off with the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups is showing up here, and this is only part of the energy that may play out. I would be more um, concentrated on the fact that if it's a major arcana, definitely the energy is going to play out. But we don't know until we see what else is going to be uh, revealed for you. But as I spoke, I believe in Scorpio and another uh, sign that I said, this Eight of Cups is not always about having to walk away you know, from a, a, a situation. It's it's maybe turning your back, yes. And and it could mean walking away. Um, but I feel that the Eight of Cups is, is a handing a loss or being uh, dealt a loss. But the Cups represent other people for me. So what I'm saying is that it's other people who are trying, who might be trying to possibly uh, dump their emotions on you and you don't want to be dealing with it. As I said in Scorpio, you don't want to become a sponge or a doormat because once you absorb that energy, then you start to feel the way that they feel. Someone who is sad, someone who is not happy about something specific in their life, they're telling you about it, they're crying to you about it. And then by the time it's all said and done, instead of you lending a, a, a comforting ear or a shoulder to cry on, well, you're feeling the exact same way that they're feeling, that they you know, dumped on you about. So what I'm saying to you is what I said to Scorpio and the other sign, I can't think of who received it, is to be very, very careful and caution yourself when you move about this week and, and it's in relationship to other people. The cups do represent children, so it could be some sort of factor involving you know children of Sagittarius, but do not allow your energies to be absorbed from other people's drama. Okay, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces represents this Eight of Cups in your shadow. Then you have the Major Arcana as your focus, the Chariot. So you're good to go. Anytime a Major Arcana starts us off in the focus and is a very positive one, uh, you're good to go. The Chariot is something positive moving forward. It's, um, you know, someone who could be possibly um, wanting to purchase a car, you know, rent a car. Uber and Lyft services. It's major, minor car repairs. The only thing that I pick up with the uh, chariot on, you know, I wouldn't even deem it as negative. If you're one of those Sagittarians who like 
to be a speed freak and you're not paying attention to the uh, the speed limits, then you could end up with a moving violation. So just be careful there. And I oftentimes equate this um, chariot with that of the star card, hopes, wishes, and dreams. Um, you know, becoming fulfilled and manifested. So it could be that there is some sort of manifestation that you want to, um, you know, bring into your life and it may be something that happens this week. That's a possibility, okay? But something positive moves forward. You always have to think of the uh, chariot as a means of transportation, all means of transportation, but it's also movement. So it's moving or heading in the right direction and the same energy could you know, be applied to you and some sort of significant uh, energy um, you know, that you're tapped into this upcoming week. Okay, Traveling could be involved, short distance, long distance, could be work related. I always say that it's you know, safe passage to, safe passage from. Very positive card to start off with. Chariot represents Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Now, what's interesting here is that we have the Eight of Cups as your shadow. We have the um, Chariot as your focus. Uh, Sagittarius, what's crossing that Chariot is the Nine of Cups. Okay, now this is another pleasant, a pleasantry, you know, to receive in a reading. Nine of Cups is the yes answer, <clears throat> excuse me, to any, uh, of course, romantic question. But because this is an open general reading, it, it stretches out to all um, you know, relationships. The fox here laying here uh, content because the cups are above have provided everything for comfort for him. So it could be that you're comforted to know that you're uh, supported, um, <clears throat> that you're loved. You have these people in your life that care about you and then, you know, of course you're going to love and care about them as well. But you have that support. And that's what's making you sleep a little bit better, cozy up a little bit better, because you have all of that warmth and that, that fuzziness, you know, surrounding you. Now, I ain't saying that's the case for everybody, but you get my drift. Okay, so Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces represents that Nine of Cups. Very favorable card to receive. Now we have the Seven of Cups. Okay, so we got the Seven of Cups showing up here. And if you don't own this deck, I'm not saying everybody is a tarot uh, collector or a reader and stuff, but, you know, if you get your hands on this deck, I'm telling you, you're going to fall in love with it. The imagery is extraordinary. It's out of this world. Um, the Seven of Cups is a card that casts illusion, as I always say. Uh, so you got to be careful. The cups will represent the other people. And then again, it may be connected to the Eight of Cups. Remember other people's drama? Then you have to go about moving to um, deal with other people the way that you need to deal with them, Sagittarius, not the way that you want to deal with them, and, and also to involving situations. You know, you always have to see the situations for what they are and not what you want them to be, okay? That's the illusion. That's the Seven of Cups. It's still a card of options because we do have... Uh, a relationship card, well, this is still a relationship card as well, then, you know, it could be there's some sort of form of um, relationships that are, you know, um, pinned together or, you know, come together. That could be the case. Making sure that whatever options that do become available for you, Sagittarius, that you're always choosing from the cup that is best for you, that's going to be best for you for your highest good. You know, because the only drawback is that if you end up making the wrong choice, then it usually comes back and haunts you later on. And we don't want that energy, right? So the Seven of Cups is here, again, representing Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Then we have the, oh, oh, there we go, the Six of Wands. So this is definitely representing your energies, Six of Wands here. And... I like the lion in here. This is tr this is uh, related to victory and success, traveling. Again, short distance, long distance in connection with chariot. It does mirror the chariot. Victory and success could be um, had or obtained in any given area. Okay. So that represents you, Sagittarius. Definitely represents Leo and then Aries. Six of Wands, something positive again, moving forward. 
Up next after the Six of Wands here, Sagittarius, now we have the Eight of Pentacles. And actually, this is pretty good, too. So working hard for the money, definitely uh, that would be in the Seven of Pentacles. But this is uh, you definitely being focused on the work that you're doing, being rewarded for the work that you're doing, because this is an even number of Pentacles. So that creates a balance for you as well. This still could be someone who receives a job, receives a bonus, a pay raise. Uh, it's all about generosity. Also, it uh, is about security, stability, and then also long-term energies as well. I love the Eight of Pentacles. I don't um, you know, talk about it enough, but the Eight of Pentacles is a very significant card. Uh, to receive in a reading, okay? Because it means so many things. Of course, it's the material side of it because it is the pentacles, but it means so many other things for me. And, you know, I just love to draw those energies out. Anyway, and then, you know, because the hammer is here, duh, somebody could be purchasing the hammer. All right? So <laughs> that could be a possibility as well. Or something to do with a hammer. Queen of Wands representing your energy here, Sagittarius. So you, then again, you're focused. Things heating up, things that you're passionate about. It could be a new interest or a new hobby. Um, for the females, I always throw that in there about hot flashes. That could be an ex uh, expectation. Uh, definitely sexual energy, sexual expression. You know, being able to express yourself in a passionate way. And, and you know, never anything wrong with that. It's a court card, elder. So. It could be anything going on with the cups showing up here in the form of, you know, dealing with your parents, grandparents, or someone in, um, a, well, I wouldn't necessarily say authority, but an older position. Okay, so that's your energy, um, Sagittarius, Leo, and Aries. Then we have the Five of Swords that comes up. Okay, so this is a minor uh, conflict of interest. That it might be internal, it might be external. If it is internal, just discover or try to sort out what it is that's going on uh, with you, uh, Sagittarius, and try to come to some sort of resolve. Uh, it may not be as high as the five, you know, the stressors or the conflict, but there might be just that one thing that, you know, you're, that's stressing you out and you need to, um, you know, come to some sort of remedy uh, and relieving yourself from that stress or the conflict. All right. But it's a five. Remember the fives and the tens our potential energies to show up in our lives. And then once they do and we experience it, then, you know, it's always a change of energy. That's always for the better. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius represents this five of swords. Okay, last card here is the, oh, now is this the nine of swords or the nine of wands? No, this is the nine of wands. I had to look though because the wolf. Okay, nine of wands. So one of my busy B cards, and this this energy represents you. So I, I don't really see anything going on with that um, outside of the fact that you could be finding yourself moving about in this week, doing things for yourself, doing things for your family, multitasking, um, having to do with some sort of multitasking energies and, and whatnot. But it's all good. The Nine of Wands basically just says that, you know, you will have the energy uh, to take care of all of those uh, things that come up and the things that may not even be planned. All right. So um, usually the Ten of Wands is uh, extremely busy, but you're running around uh, doing multiple, multiple things, but you got the energy to take care of all of it. So you end the week off with um, just, you know, staying busy, keeping yourself uh, busy and um, focused. See, it mirrors the uh, queen, which is the focus. Okay, some of you are focused on your work. This is the eight of um, pentacles. As I mentioned in previous readings, that I still feel that even though these restrictions are being lifted, this is my work at home, the ability to work at home card and still draw an income. So a lot of people are still working at home. Excuse me. But they're, they're drawing an income. They're still getting paid. Okay? So that's a good thing. All right? 
Sagittarius, this is what I uh, have for you in terms of presentation this week. Remember the uh, shadow card, Eight of Cups. Do not go about um, absorbing other people's energies. You want to save your own uh, energies. You want to preserve your own energies for your own things. Okay? And it's not um, you being mean or anything like that. It's just that, you know, people like to dump on, you know, others for whatever reason. So, but don't get yourself caught up. Uh, stay strong, stay positive, and also stay safe. I always encourage that. You know that. And sending you out quite a bit of love and light your way until I talk to you again. Sagittarius, be well. Bye.